so today's webinar is uh, on importing plants and plant products after Brexit, and it's the it's the first in the series of of webinars uh, that we were running. So my name is Declan Keeley from the um, Horticulture and Plant Health Division of the Department of Agriculture, Forestry and Food, um, Food and Marine, and uh, we're also joined today by uh, Tom Fabose, and Tom is organising these events over the next few weeks. So we're going to see one on important plants today, but we'll see one on animals and marine and, and so on through the different areas. And just watch out on our website, gov.e, and also on social media for these events being advertised. So just on today's webinar is important plants and plant products uh, after Brexit, including uh, secondhand farm machinery. Um, and Shane is going to take you through that uh, now. And there's an opportunity on your screen there to ask some questions. So if, if you ask a question during the presentation, we can have a question and answer session and discussion after the presentation. So I'll hand you over to Shane there now. We're only 60 odd ways, days away from Brexit. So Shane will take us through the presentation and update us on it. Thanks very much, uh, Declan. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, apologies again for the technical difficulties there. Uh, we hope everyone can hear us now. As Declan said, I'm going to run through this presentation uh, on the importation of plants and plant products from the UK after Brexit, uh, and after which we'll have a Q&A session to try and answer, or certainly to answer any questions you may have. Uh, so first of all, uh, just before I start the presentation, I'm just going to deactivate my camera uh, just to preserve uh, broadband and everything and you should still be able to hear me there now. So my name is Shane Kirk. I'm an Assistant Agricultural Inspector with the Horticulture and Plant Health Division of the Department of Agriculture, Food and the Marine, uh, and I'm involved in the import and export of, of plants and plant products. So uh, we'll make a start on, on the presentation. So this, this webinar will focus on six different main aspects. Uh, so the first one you see there is import controls. So it's just to give a, a short introduction to import controls. Why does DAFM uh, or the Department of Agriculture, Food and the Marine conduct import controls? We'll then have a look at regulated plants and plant products to give you definition on what is regulated and what isn't regulated. We'll then take a quick look at prohibited plants and plant products. So that's plants and plant products which will not be allowed into Ireland currently from third countries or from GB from the 1st of January. We'll then take a look at phytosanitary certificates. So what exactly is a phytosanitary certificate? What does a phytosanitary certificate say? We'll then also look at wood packaging material. So that's pallets, crates, dunnage associated with imports, uh, otherwise known as WPM. And finally, then we'll also look at how to import plant and plant products uh, from the UK uh, to Ireland uh, from the 1st of January next year. So first of all, just to start with a, a, a kind of a state of play in, in relation to Brexit. So the UK formally left the EU on the 1st of February 2020 and is now in a transition period where they continue to apply the rules of the customs union and the single market. So that will continue up to and including the 31st of December uh, 2020. And from 1st of January 2021, uh, new requirements will be in place. So the 1st of January will bring significant change to the EU-UK trading relationship. The UK will be a third country or non-EU country operating outside the EU's customs union and single market. And because of that, that means that new customs and SPS, so SPS means sanitary and phytosanitary requirements will apply to trade with Great Britain, regardless of whether there is a trade agreement between the EU and the UK. So there may still be some requirements, even if there is a trade deal. So what we're saying currently is we're asking businesses to, I suppose, prepare as best they can to, to contact the department with any queries or any questions. And that means that you will be prepared and therefore that will minim minimise any disruption to your business from the 1st of January where possible. Also just to note as well that under the terms of the Northern Ireland Protocol, uh, trade with Northern Ireland uh, is unaffected and can continue as it does now. So for plants and plant products from Northern Ireland being brought into Ireland or vice versa, they currently move under what's called a plant passport that can continue from the 1st of January. So effectively, the requirements that I'm speaking of after this is for anything coming from GB or Great Britain from the 1st of January, 2021. So import controls. 
uh, why do what are import controls why do DAFM carry out import controls so import controls just very briefly are controls where we carry out checks they would either be documentary identity or physical checks on import consignments of plants and plant products coming from third countries the reason we carry out import controls is Ireland is a full member of the International Plant Protection Convention or the IPPC along with over 180 other countries and under the terms of that International Plant Protection Convention it is effectively a treaty which agrees all countries agree to uh, to implement measures to prevent the spread and introduction of pests and diseases to different countries around the world. So under the terms of the International Plant Protection Convention, DAFM, or the Department of Agriculture, Food and the Marine, is the national plant protection organisation of Ireland, and each country around the world has an MPPO. The import controls are carried out to prevent the introduction of pests where possible, to ensure that these pests don't become prevalent, don't affect our agricultural uh, industry, our horticultural industry, and where possible, protect Ireland's environment uh, to the best, uh, to the best as as to the best level as possible whilst facilitating trade. So DAFM has a plant health and biosecurity strategy which was launched earlier this year, 2020 to 2025. The plant health and biosecurity strategy focuses on three different things. Uh, so the first one is risk anticipation. So effectively keeping an eye out, risk monitoring to see uh, where, what, which pests and diseases have outbroken in particular countries or are native to particular countries. Then we have risk surveillance and management. So risk surveillance is where import controls falls in. That's where we carry out controls on import consignments to ensure that they, these consignments are free of pests and diseases. And finally, then risk awareness and communication. So that's communicating these risks to the like of, of the businesses dialed in here today. And that's a risk of awareness raising with, with all of the business and all of the stakeholders throughout the agricultural and the horticultural industry. Finally then, just to say 2020 has been nominated by the United Nations as the International Year of Plant Health. Uh, and Ireland is a very active member in the International Year of Plant Health. That's something that we had a series of events organized, unfortunately, which had to be canceled obviously due to the, the, the current uh, health situation within the country and quite rightly so. However, we will be planning additional uh, online events. And if anyone out there would like to get involved or anything or keep aware of it, keep an eye on our website, www.gov.ie slash agriculture, where you will find updates in relation to the International Year of Plant Health. And our president, Michael D. Higgins, launched the International Year of Plant Health in Ireland back in January by planting a native oak tree in, in the Phoenix Park. So moving on then, just to have a look at the EU regulations on import controls. So whilst obviously under our plant health and biosecurity strategy, we want to conduct these import controls, we are also obliged to do so as an EU member, we have to abide by the EU regulations. So the EU regulations on import controls, the first one there you have is the plant health regulation 2016-2031. So the plant health regulation became active on the 14th of December 2019 and effectively that lays down through various articles what uh, the particular dangerous pests are, what particular species of plants can carry those pests and so on and so forth and it also dictates which plants and plant products are regulated or not regulated. Then you have the official controls regulation 2017-625 or the OCR. Uh, and this lays down the official controls, where they should be carried out, how they should be carried out, and who should carry them out uh, to ensure, the, to, to, to minimise the risk of spread of pests and diseases. And then finally, you have the Commission Implementing Directive 2019-2072. So that implementing directive lays down by the species category, uh, all of the special requirements for the introduction of plants and plant products into the EU, and what special requirements are attached to the import of those products. Finally, then, just to say, checks are required under those legislation. Uh, checks are required on plants and plant products from third countries upon their introduction into the EU. And again, to highlight that from the 1st of January, effectively, the UK will be a third country. So any plants or plant products being introduced into Ireland from the 1st of January will have to abide by those new uh, regulations.
just to mention as well, uh, on the right hand side there, you'll see a picture of a bug. Uh, that particular bug is Anophilora glabri penis, or easy, easier to say is the Asian longhorn beetle. And I just mentioned him there because he's going to crop up later on and I'll give you a bit more information. So I suppose this, these two pictures highlight uh, the risks uh, involved in, in, I suppose, the when what can happen when a particular pest or disease is introduced to an environment. This picture is of Tory Hill in Mullinavart, County Kilkenny, and the picture on the left-hand side was taken in 2010. And what happened was there was a series of large trees uh, became infected by a disease or a water mould called Phytophthora remorum. And because it became infected, to prevent the spread of this disease throughout the country, it infected uh, large trees. And to prevent the spread of this disease throughout the country, obviously control measures are required, which effectively required uh, the, the trees to be removed. And as you can see from the picture on the right hand side, it's a, a fairly significant change from the original. And it just shows the impact that some of these pests and diseases can have on Ireland's biodiversity and wider environment. And it just backs, I suppose, backs up the reasoning behind carrying out these checks and controls on imported consignments to ensure that they're free of pests and diseases. So next then we're going to have a look at regulated plants and plant products. So what exactly is a regulated plant or plant product? So it's actually very, very simple. Under the new plant health regulation, all plants or plant products are regulated. So this currently applies to all third countries outside of the EU. And as we said previously, will apply to imports of plants and plant products from the 1st of January from Great Britain. So the plants or plant products included are plants, trees, shrubs, flowers, cuttings, bulbs, combs, fruits, berries and seeds and anything else. There's more on that list as well, such as rhizomes, rootstocks, so on and so forth. So everything is regulated. There are only five exceptions to that particular list of regulated plants and plant products, and they are fruits of dates, durians, bananas, pineapples, and coconuts. They're the only five exceptions, meaning everything else is regulated. All regulated plants or plant products must have a phytosanitary certificate. So if you were to if you're importing bananas or pineapples or coconuts, they are not regulated. You do not need to have a phytosanitary certificate, and there are no import controls by DAFM conducted on those particular on those particular species. Everything else is regulated, everything else must have a phytosanitary certificate, and everything else will be subject to import controls. Just to highlight as well, secondhand machinery is also regulated, and this is currently again in place for all current third countries, and it will become it will be in place from the 1st of January for any secondhand machinery being imported from Great Britain to Ireland from the 1st of January. The secondhand machinery affected is machinery that has been previously used for agriculture, horticultural, or forestry purposes. And the reason why secondhand machinery has been regulated is a lot of machinery perhaps could have presence of soil or plant debris or organic matter. And that soil, organic matter or plant debris has the potential to carry pests and diseases into Ireland and the EU as a whole. So that is something that the regulation of the secondhand machinery is seeking to avoid. So the regulated secondhand machinery includes tractors, ploughs, tuber harvesters, planters, combine harvesters, harrows and rotavators. There is a there is a few more uh, items on that list as well. Just a couple of weeks ago, the Horticulture and Plant Health Division on behalf of DAFM issued a trader notice to all of our registered clients. We also highlighted it to some of the industry uh, as well. That trader notice is now available on that link and you'll be able to click on that link after this when the presentation is on the website and it'll bring you directly to that trader notice. And in Annex 1 of that trader notice, it gives you the full list of all of the regulated secondhand machinery, and it also includes the CN code or customs code associated with each one of those pieces of machinery. So just to note then as well, because secondhand machinery is regulated, that means secondhand machinery also needs a phytosanitary certificate. So if you are going to import secondhand machinery from Great Britain from the 1st of January, you will have to get a phytosanitary certificate, and also you need to ensure that the machinery is completely clean and free of any soil, plant debris, or organic matter. 
So moving on then, uh, what is a phytosanitary certificate? So a phytosanitary certificate is an official document. It's an official certificate. It comes from the National Plant Protection Organization or MPPO of the exporting country to the same organization of the importing country. So as I said previously, DAFM is the MPPO of Ireland. So if anyone out there is exporting plants or plant products from Ireland to a country outside of the EU, they contact us currently and we conduct an inspection and we provide a phytosanitary certificate. Now that phytosanitary certificate will be addressed to the MPPO of the other country, whoever is taking whatever country is importing the goods. And it'll, it's a, basically an official attestation that we have inspected it and we found it free that uh, from soil pests and diseases or anything else that is required. So again, what is a phytosanitary certificate? It is the official document between the two national plant protection organizations. Some additional declarations may be required depending on the genus and the species. A couple of things just to note, Ireland has 22 protected zones. So a protected zone is a zone within the EU where thanks to, uh, thanks to inspection and sampling and testing and everything, we have confirmed that Ireland is free of a particular pest or disease. And we have this protected zone status for 22 organisms in total. So because of that, there could be special requirements for the import of a particular plant or plant product, genus or species, de de sorry, depending on the genus or species. So because of those special requirements, if you're unsure as to what the, the requirements are, you can contact us at plantimports at agriculture.gov.ie and I'll come back to that later on. Now, I'm just going to come out of this because I just want to show you the phytosanitary certificate. So I hope everyone can see that. So this is just a model phytosanitary certificate. So as you can see, it's a single page document and this is one that we would issue you can see there it has ec on it for the the european community uh, so it's a slightly older version but it's just to give you a, a quick look at what a phytosanitary certificate will look like in field one you have the name and the, the address of the exporter so that would be the details of the company exporting the goods in this case from gb from the first of january then you have the name and address of the consignee which is the person that's being sent to here in ireland you can see there at number four you have the plant protection organization of, and in this case, it'll say the UK to the plant protection organization of, and there it'll say Ireland. So it runs through different details, the place of origin, how it's traveling, uh, where it's going to come into the country. In box number eight, it asks for distinguishing marks, the number and description of packages, botanical name of plants, the quantity declared. The ones to keep an eye on here, our uh, number 10 is just that's what effectively a phytosanitary certificate states so this is to certify that the plants or plant products described above have been inspected according to appropriate procedures and are considered to be free from quarantine pests and practically free from other injurious pests and then in box number 11 is where if a particular species a genus or species of plant or plant product has a special requirement or an additional declaration required it's in box number 11 where that will be stated and finally then on the bottom we have any treatments or disinfection that the consignment has gone through and then on the right in the bottom right hand corner you have the the stamp of the organization the national plant protection organization and the name and signature of the authorized officer so that's just to give you a, a, a quick look at a phytosanitary certificate Now, and just back into the slideshow now. So as I said, in relation to the special requirements, you can contact us at plantimports at agriculture.gov.ie. So then the question is, where do I get a phytosanitary certificate? So as previously said, all regulated plants and plant products, including secondhand machinery, require a phytosanitary certificate. So your supplier in Great Britain will get the required phytosanitary certificate and they will get that from the UK Plant Health Authorities or the National Plant Protection Organization of the UK. And again, for any queries in relation to it or what's required on the phytosanitary certificate, you can contact us at plantimports at agriculture.gov.ie and we'll advise you of the required certification.
just to mention there as well that once the phytosanitary certificate is received by the, the supplier in the UK, that will be part of the documents that are submitted to DAFM prior to the import of the consignment. So just to take a quick look at prohibited goods from Great Britain from January 1st, and please note that this currently applies to all other third countries as well. Soil will be prohibited from Great Britain. Soil is banned from outside of the EU from third countries, so that will apply from the 1st of January. Seed and ware potatoes will be prohibited from Great Britain from the 1st of January. Uh, HP, HD on behalf, sorry, the Horticulture and Plant Health Division on behalf of DAFM uh, issued a trader notice last week in relation to this, and we're encouraging anyone who is intending on importing seed or ware potatoes into Ireland to have them landed prior to the 1st of January 2021. Machinery which has soil or plant debris attached will be prohibited. So even if you have a phytosanitary certificate and you go to import machinery, if the machinery is found to be dirty or has soil, organic matter or plant debris, the machinery will not be allowed in to the country as it poses a phytosanitary risk. Finally then, just to say, with soil being banned, growing medium, so any growing medium attached to plants, whether it's in, in pots or bags or root balls and so on, cannot be, there can be no soil present and the growing medium must be made up entirely of peat or coconut fibre. So now we're just going to start looking at uh, the individual methods of, of how you can bring a plant or plant product or import a plant or plant product from Great Britain to Ireland from the 1st of January. And this, the first one there is personal consignments. So personal consignments is any consignment that is, I suppose, attached to a, a traveller or passenger, whether it is through the port or the airport. Now, all plants or plant products are regulated. So all of the regulated plants or plant products will still need a phytosanitary certificate. So even if you are in, for example, Great Britain, somewhere in Great Britain, and you buy a plant to bring that back to Ireland, you will require a phytosanitary certificate. Now, we ask people, and this applies to all third countries, we do say to people, don't risk it. Please don't take home plants or plant products or seeds or anything from abroad. We have a very good uh, native horticultural industry here in Ireland who would be able to provide you with any plants or plant products that you require. And we ask people to please buy them within Ireland and don't bring uh, plants or plant products or seeds home from abroad. And as I said there, this currently applies to all third countries and it will apply to Great Britain from the 1st of January 2021. It includes all regulated plants or plant products and for a personal consignment, again, no soil is allowed. So the growing medium must be peat or coir. So if it's in, if, if you have it in a pot, the growing medium that's attached to the plant has to be peat or, or coir. So then moving on to postal or courier consignments. So again, we have or we're aware of what is regulated and are regulated plants and plant products. All of those will need a phytosanitary certificate for postal or courier consignments. So I do know we have some organisations dialed in today where their members might be getting their seed via post from, from companies in the UK or in Great Britain. And I would urge you to remind them that from the 1st of January, they should ask their supplier for a phytosanitary certificate. And your supplier will be aware of this fact and they will be able to get a phytosanitary certificate from the MPPO of the UK. So just remind your supplier of that. And again, this currently applies to all third countries and will apply to Great Britain from January 1st, 2021. So then just before we move on to the, the commercial consignments, just to highlight uh, the wood packaging material. So wood packaging material or WPM. So that's anything, for example, like crates, dunnage or pallets. The wood packaging material is also regulated and it's regulated and it can be associated in the transport of goods of any kind. So it doesn't matter if the consignment is plants or plant products or washing machines or car parts or it can be absolutely anything. The wood packaging material has to be compliant with the regulation and that regulation is ISPM 15 or International Standard for Phytosanitary Measure 15. That's an international measure which sets down the standards for treatment and marking of WPM to help prevent the international transport and spread of diseases and insects that could negatively affect trees, plants or ecosystems. 
ISPM 15 will become a requirement for all imported consignments from GB from the 1st of January. Now the pictures here that I have on the right hand side just shows you we have here the Irish ISPM 15 template and brand. So that's effectively what the brand that you will see uh, that's burned or stamped onto the pallets that have been treated to ISPM 15 standard. Uh, and we have the, 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 the template and also the brand on the right hand side where we've just blocked out the, the, the person's registration number. So that's what it looks like. It's crucial for wood packaging material from third countries to be ISPM 15 compliant. And the reason for that, we'll go back to our friend, the Asian longhorn beetle or Anoplophora glabry penis. So this particular insect uh, is native to China and Korea. There has been a significant outbreak of this pest in the United States uh, and in North America, Canada included, in the, in the last number of years. It has been found that it moved in wood packaging material to the United States. So effectively, the way this the way this insect uh, operates or its life cycle, what happens is the females lay uh, eggs or larvae at the bottom of a tree, at which point the larvae will then start to eat through the tree, traveling up through the, through the tree, eating the tissue or the timber on the inside of the tree. During this process, it will go through life cycles and will develop into the adult that we see in the picture there on the right hand side. And eventually it eats its way out and creates an exit hole and flies out and the whole life cycle begins again. Now this particular insect can have a devastating impact on, on ecosystems and could have, if it was happened to travel to Ireland, could have a devastating impact here as well. So in the United States, they had to take under uh, they had to take uh, an, an eradication program and had to conduct that eradication program to prevent the further spread and outbreak of this pest because of the devastation that it caused. And just to note that that eradication program, it included spraying insecticides and things. It also included tree felling to try and remove uh, trees that had been infected with the, with the larvae. In total, 101,000 trees had to be felled in the United States and the eradication cost approximately $373 million. So that just highlights the impact that something can have and the way that travels on the wood packaging material was, as I said, the, the adult insect lays its larvae in the trees. Trees were then cut down with the larvae inside and used for wood packaging material, but were never treated to ISPM 15 standard. And that meant then that when the pallets traveled across, the larvae were still inside, at which point they emerged and became adults and the whole cycle started all over again. So that's just to highlight the dangers and indeed highlight again why DAFM conduct import controls on regulated plants, plant products, secondhand machinery and wood packaging material. So to move on now then to commercial consignments. Uh, so commercial consignments of plants and plant products can enter through three locations. So under the EU regulations, we are required to nominate border control posts. And there are currently three border control posts or BCPs as they're called for plants and plant products in Ireland. These are Dublin Airport, Dublin Port and Rossley Airport. So these three BCPs have been nominated to, to receive plants and plant products. So if you're importing consignments of plants or plant products from GB from the 1st of January, they will have to go through one of these three locations. So how to import plants and plant products? I suppose the main thing here is to, to highlight is to register with the department. It's crucial that any business or organisation out there registers with the Department of Agriculture, Food and the Marine. The reason for that is, first of all, registration is completely free of charge. It's relatively simple and easy. You fill out a couple of forms and return them to us and we'll get you registered on our systems. It means once you're on our systems, you will receive updates. For example, the Horticulture and Plant Health Division issue trader notices. You would receive those trader notices. Also, we issue a quarterly newsletter, which you would also be in receipt of as well. And it means you'll be kept fully up to date with any developments within, the, within your specific or specified industry. In relation to registration, then the operator responsible for the consignment or OFC, as it's known, they are also required to register for the trade control and expert system, which is TRACES. So TRACES is the European notification system for imports. And we'll come back to that later on. Finally, then to import into one of these three sites, 
you will have to notify the department 24 hours before the arrival of the consignment by submitting the relevant documentation to our IT portal. So first of all, to start at number one, to register with the department, if you visit uh, www.gov.ie slash agriculture, that will show you that you can learn how to register and complete the registration forms. So as I said, there's two forms there. You fill out those two forms and you return them to Brexit registration at agriculture.gov.ie. And there underneath, we've also included the full link. So just to highlight as well, this applies to importers and exporters. But in terms of the plant health regulation, if you or your business is in any way operating or is a professional operator in terms of plants, if you're buying or selling plants or trading in plants, you're also required to register with the Department of Agricultural Food and the Marine. So you can do that through the, the, this method also. Second then is to figure out what the phytosanitary requirements are. So if you want to import a plant, plant product, secondhand machinery, you want to import that into the country, you need to find out what the phytosanitary requirements are. The reason for that is your supplier in the UK will be asked by the MPPO in the UK to provide a written declaration from the Irish MPPO or DAFM. And if you email us, if you send us the details, including the genus and species of the, the plants or plant products, we will reply and we will advise you of the phytosanitary requirements for that specific genus or species or secondhand machinery, depending on what the particular consignment is. Once we email you the, that back, you can then use that as a written declaration. You can send this email to the UK supplier. The supplier will then contact the UK Plant Health or the MPPO in the UK, and they will have that written declaration there clearly stating what is required on the phytosanitary certificate, and then UK Plant Health or the MPPO in the UK will then issue the supplier with the necessary phytosanitary certificate. To do that, then you just send that to plantimports at agriculture.gov.ie and you'll receive a reply with the full breakdown of what's required. Thirdly, then in relation to traces, so it's traces new technology. So for short, it's traces NT. And traces NT is required for the importation of plants and plant products into the European Union. So again, this is currently in operation for existing third countries. So anyone taking in uh, regulated plants or plant products into Ireland from any third country outside the EU is currently using, using traces and so on to make declarations. So just to give a bit of background, the traces is the European Commission's online platform for the electronic completion of documentation required for the import of consignments from third countries and certain intra-community trade movements, but we don't need to worry about that. We're just focused here on the imports of plants and plant products from GB from January 1st. So once you have the, once you've registered with the department, you will then need to decide if you're going to be the operator responsible for the consignment. If you are, that means you will also need to register for Traces NT. If you decide you're going to use some kind of an agent or customs agent to, to do all of this on your behalf, well, then that agent will need to register for Traces NT. You will still have to register with the department, but your agent will have to register for the Traces NT to carry out that, uh, to carry out the, the, the completion of part one. So the first part there is the operator responsible for the consignment of the RFC completes part one of the SHED PP. Now, a SHED is a common health entry document. That's just the, the shorthand for it is SHED. And that applies to many products uh, outside of plants and plant, plant products for the importation into the EU. And effectively, there is a part one of a shed PP loaded on Traces NT and the agent or indeed yourself will go in to complete that part one. Once you've completed part one, you will get a shed PP number. So it's a reference number from completing part one of that application. And once you get that, you will then submit all of the necessary documentation to the department's imports control web portal. So effectively what you do is you register with the department, the person responsible for the consignment registers with traces. When the consignment is coming 24 hours in advance, the person or the operator responsible for the consignment completes part one of the shed PP on traces NT, after which they'll have a reference number, at which point they then submit all of the documentation associated with it, including the phytosanitary certificate, to the department via our imports control web portal, which is available at that link. And there's also a link there for information on traces as well and how to register and how to use it. Now, one thing I will say in terms of the registration, 
if you contact us about registering or you have questions around traces or anything like that, or indeed the DAFM import control web portal, we have user guides and user documents for all of these things available on the website. So what we would encourage you to do is to contact us, to register with us, to ensure that you're kept up to date. And then we do have a, a Traces NT help desk available for to assist in any queries and so on as well, that are any queries around Traces NT. So the full details of the import procedure for plants and plant products and secondhand machinery is available at that link. Um, I haven't gone through everything today or indeed the, the full list of the necessary documentation or anything because I, I would worry it, it may get a bit confusing. However, the, the full link is there. The, if you click on that link, it'll bring you in to the, the full import procedures and the procedures for Dublin Airport, Dublin Port and Ross Airport and how you submit the documentation and how you complete part one of the Shed PP and so on. For any Brexit queries, uh, if you're worried, where you're not sure, you have any questions, you can contact Brexit call at agriculture.gov.ee. And in terms of phytosanitary queries, if you have any queries around phytosanitary certificates or what you need, you can contact plant imports at agriculture.gov.ee as well. So moving on then, just to give you a brief overview or breakdown of import controls. So there are three different types of import controls for, pl for plants and plant products. They are a documentary check, an identity check, and a physical check. Uh, the picture on the right is our T10, Terminal 10 in Dublin Port, where these checks will be being conducted. And just first of all to say a dot check, all regulated plants and plant products so everything, as we said previously, is regulated apart from the famous five. So all of those consignments of plants and plant products will be subjected to a documentary check. Finally then, uh, oh sorry, to, to move on to the second part, an identity check will be required on some regulated plants or plant products. This is done on a risk-based approach and it's set down in EU legislation. And that also applies to the physical checks so something that is physically inspected by our plant health inspectors. It's again done on a risk-based approach and it's set down in EU legislation. Just to note as well that for these checks on consignments, there are fees. So there are fees associated with doc documentary checks, identity checks and physical checks. And a full breakdown of the fees is available at the on the link in the previous page where it gives you the procedures for the import of plants and plant products. To, uh, for, for, uh, from any third country or indeed from GB from the 1st of January. So finally then, just to highlight uh, action taken in cases of non-compliances. So for example, if it's found that your particular consignment is not compliant with the, the EU legislation or with the requirements laid down in the EU legislation, it is possible that the consignment could be refused entry. There may be an imposition of a quarantine period. For example, let's say if there was a phytosanitary certificate missing, you will not be, the, the consignment will not be allowed in until the full and correct documentation is received. If a particular consignment is found to be infested, or indeed, let's say, for example, if it's two different species uh, of plants and one particular species of plant is found to be infested with, with bugs or diseases or pests, we can remove that the infested part of the consignment and release everything else. And finally then, if it is found to be a, a, in, infected or if pests or diseases are found to be present, we do have destruction, incineration, freezing. And in some cases, you may be asked to, to provide some level of treatment to the particular consignment, such as fumigation, to, to prevent the introduction of pests and diseases. So with 65 days uh, to Brexit, here's what you can do now. So number one, get informed about the new proce procedures, certificates and documentation required. Uh, I hope that I've given you a, a, a small taste. I, I certainly didn't want to run through everything today uh, because we would have been here for quite a while. So it was more just to give you a, a taste or a flavor of what is required to give a bit of background as to what is a regulated plant or plant product, what is a phytosanitary certificate, etc. So hopefully with this presentation, if you go to the link which has been provided earlier, which lays out the full procedures, you will have a better understanding of what you're actually looking at and you'll be able to move down through, through the procedures. Number two is register with the department and the relevant online certification systems. So I would encourage you to register with the department. As I said, registration is free of charge. 
and you can do it. It's a very quick and easy process and you'll receive confirmation back from the department when you have been registered and it means then that you will be registered in, in any event uh, of, regardless of, of the outcome of, of trade talks and so on, you will be prepared. And finally then visit our website for all the Brexit information you need and to ensure you avoid significant delays and to minim minimise disruption to your business. And that goes back to having the correct documentation, having everything completed on the online certification systems and so on. The more prepared you are, and if you have everything correct, the less chance there is of any significant delay or uh, any disruption to your business or trade flow. And you can visit that at www.gov.ie forward slash agriculture. So that's everything uh, in my presentation. Uh, thank you very much, everyone, for, for listening.